Hello, I'm Killian Plunkett. I'm the lead designer on The Clone Wars, and today we're looking at the Onderon arc. The big thing for us on this was that we were in a jungle for a large part of the time, so there was a lot more exploration of natural forms like trees and wild animals, and there was also a certain amount of thought given to the kinds of uniforms that troops would use, what kind of armor would they wear or not wear, what kind of supplies and weapons would they have. They were initially inspired by some drawings from way, way back for Return of the Jedi for what would eventually be the Endor Rebel troops. These weren't quite what the final version that's in the movie looks like, so we looked at these and thought, well, these are cool, but they never appeared on screen, so is there a way to take this as inspiration? So Dave Filoni did a bunch of sketches using these and some other drawings that we had found in the archives as a sort of jumping off point. Some of the ideas, such as the helmet and the goggles for Return of the Jedi, was looked at again and then ended up sort of being translated all the way through into the final soldier designs. So one of the other things that we were thinking about was to suddenly sort of begin to suggest that this was one of the starting places for what would eventually become the Rebel Alliance. And one of the things that Dave wanted to do that was subtle but would be there and visible for people with eagle eyes would be that there is a section of the symbol on the classic Rebel Alliance logo that you'll find on Rebel pilot helmets that also appears here on the Andron Rebel helmet. Um, they are deliberately not exactly the same, but there is a very, very similar shape right here, close enough to that sort of original shape that it doesn't seem like it's just a coincidence. It is very consciously meant to be something that evokes what would eventually end up on Rebel pilot helmets. We're not giving up yet. Stagger our defenses to the camp. Secure the approach. Stay in small teams. For the Onderon rebels, they're meant to sort of evoke the Rebel Alliance troops that you would have seen on Endor, but they aren't meant to look exactly like them. The sort of thinking behind it is to have you more easily believe that this is all one sort of continuous story and that the history that occurs during the Clone Wars has a direct bearing on what you see in the classic trilogy as well. So we had to come up with some new creatures for this one. The two most distinctive ones are probably the sort of horse-like Dalgo creature, which is here, and the flying creature, which is the Rooping creature, uh, designed by Tara Rooping. This here is probably familiar to some of you. This is the um, Philumpa set. This is one that has been retextured to sort of look a little more like a jungle animal. We get actually a fair amount of mileage out of doing things this way, where you can grab an existing animal, and in some cases a character too, and then apply a new coat of paint. Sometimes make small changes to the geo and then just sort of drop it in the background and it helps populate a world, which is very helpful for something like Onderon because you're trying to give the impression of this very rich, dense forest jungle area and you sort of try and use whatever you already have as much as you possibly can to just bring it all to life. It's surprisingly difficult to do the chaos of something like a jungle or a densely overgrown forest, because if you think about it, you have to design not just the tree canopy itself, but also the sort of ground level ferns, all the small shrubs, the fallen over logs, all that sort of thing. Some of this stuff would be for practical purposes, how much are you going to build versus how much will you paint as a background. So it was a pretty steep learning curve, but the stuff that we figured out here paid off. And in the future, you'll see how all of this living in the jungle helped us figure out how to do other interesting trees and jungle planets in other stories. 